Hello! Today on Fox Arcade, I'm going to be talking about 1985's Yi Ar Kung Fu, a fighting game which feels largely forgotten today, despite its big impact on the genre. Beating your friends senseless has always been a popular hobby, but fighting games were still slow to develop in the early days of arcades. It was 1976 when Sega released Heavyweight Champ, the first competitive fighter, but almost a decade went by before things started to resemble what you'd consider a modern fighting game today. 1984's Karate Champ is most commonly lauded as the genre's beginnings, with its head-to-head -head gameplay and twin-stick controls. Combining directions together mimicked about 16 different attacks, with victories awarded based on a technical points system. In its day, there was nothing else like Karate Champ, but it's fair to say that this is a lot closer to a respectable sports simulation than an arcade adrenaline rush, which is what makes the games that followed it so important. The exuberant culture of fighting games only began to develop after the success of Karate Champ, and that's where Yi Ar Kung Fu comes in. You play as Wu Long, a young martial arts expert who must win a fighting tournament in order to avenge his father's death. Inspired by Karate Champ, directional inputs are used to attack, but now paired with a button to finally trigger the move. All eight directions produce different moves when combined with either punch or kick. Being able to move more fluidly, as well as perform deadly combat, created a stronger sense of agency over the game. It's far less technical and a lot more energetic. Yi Ar Kung Fu was also inspired by Nintendo's Punch-Out, which was the first to introduce a broadcast of antagonizers to take down over Karate Champ's singular opponent. Kung Fu includes 11 villains as well as featuring Punch-Out's stamina bars, instantly indicating who's in control of the fight to both players and spectators. Yi Ar Kung Fu was the first to place these at the top of the screen, running out towards the center, making it simple to read with just a glance. Looking back, the spread of ideas through the genre is plain to see. Yi Ar Kung Fu's control scheme was fueled by inspiration from Karate Champ and paired with a new visual language kindled in Punch Out. All this would ultimately blow up in 1987's Street Fighter and the games which followed, finally triggering the fighting game explosion of the 1990s. Yi Ar Kung Fu played an undeniable role in the evolution of the genre, but it could have been a bigger success had it included a head-to-head -head mode. Two can play side by side, but it's an alternating single player campaign against the CPU. Had Konami included a true competitive mode, the entire gaming industry today could be unrecognisable. But despite that drawback, those of particular tastes will still find this a Moorish single player experience. It's easy to brute force your way past the first stage, as Buchu endlessly repeats this rocketing headbutt, which would later become an E-Honda signature. He's followed by a collection of fighters, destined killers since birth, with Star, Nunsha and Pole all sporting mnemonically specific weaponry. Star's shuriken attacks are easily avoided, while Nunsha and Pole will challenge you to move as fast as they do, attacking at close range. It's fun to suss out each opponent's pattern and the right moves to overcome them. The game's biggest flaw only appears partway through the tournament, once you meet Club. Not only does Club wield a club, he also possesses a shield to block your attacks, and it's here you realise Yi Ar Kung Fu is older than standardised blocking. As an aside, I'll freely admit that it took me way too long to understand blocking in any fighting game, spending most of my childhood believing it was the coward's way out. No matter how much cool stuff you can do, always remember that block is a move, as powerful as any other. You probably don't need telling this, but if you fail to master blocking in fighting games, you'll lose more matches and hours of your life than you can count, just like me. And, just like me, it seems Oolong is waiting until his mid-twenties to learn about blocking too. Given the era Kung Fu released in, this isn't such a large complaint. It's just a gimmick that Club can block and you can't. Show who's boss! But judged by modern standards, once you notice blocking is missing from your repertoire, it feels a bit cheap. That being said, this is child's play compared to the port provided for MSX and Famicom, Never localised for the West, Yi Ar Kung Fu for console changes the names and order in which your rivals appear, and is about 10,000 times more difficult to control.
Your best bet for playing this officially today is getting a Famicom Mini. This is the Japanese version of the NES Classic. I was actually given this back in 2016, and I would have loved to review Yar Kung Fu then, but I had some technical limitations. But the arcade original is unequivocally superior, recently released through Hamster Corp's arcade archives. These ports include many quality of life features, not least of all the best CRT filters in the business. As an archival restoration project, I've never seen this series put a foot wrong. As for Yi Kung Fu itself, I love being able to get my hands on this as a piece of history, but the gameplay won't be for everyone. If you're a fighting game enthusiast who's interested in the timeline of the genre, you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. Best enjoyed with friends. So that's Yi Kung Fu. Did you know that Fossil Arcade has almost reached 2,000 subscribers? So I really want to say thanks to everybody who watches and shares these videos with their friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.